Research has shown that seborrheic dermatitis may be linked to hormone imbalance or hormonal changes. And studies have shown that men with high levels of testosterone are more likely to develop seborrheic dermatitis, and women with higher levels of estrogen are also at an increased risk. Hi, my name is Dr. Sarah, and I'm a naturopathic doctor specializing in dermatology. I struggled with dandruff and seborrheic dermatitis for several years before eventually finding relief and healing the root cause. For me, I found diet and stress greatly impacted my seborrheic dermatitis, and I have a video on that topic on my channel that you can check out later if you haven't already. But another potential cause of seborrheic dermatitis is hormone imbalance. Seborrheic dermatitis is a multifactorial inflammatory type of skin manifestation that usually appears on the sebum-rich areas of the body and the scalp. So some of the times that we see these hormonal changes or imbalances are interesting to keep in mind. And so, of course, with women, when you're pregnant, you're having high levels of estrogen, as well as after birth. And we can see an increased occurrence of seborrheic dermatitis or a recurrence and increasing severity of symptoms for the mother. But then we also see a cradle cap in infants, which is also seborrheic dermatitis, happening around two weeks to a year, sometimes even two years. And while the exact cause of cradle cap is unknown, it has been hypothesized that this could be impacted by the circulating hormones of the mother, as well as the microbiome of the infant. And while there's no evidence linking estrogen causing seborrheic dermatitis directly, there is emerging evidence that shows estrogen having an impact on the fungal microbiome. So I find it very interesting that a lot of infants do have cradle cap. It's something that's very common. And so I think it's important if you are breastfeeding to take a look at the mother's health. One, of course, what is she eating and what's her stress like? And then also just the hormones that are going crazy after birth and during pregnancy and during nursing as well. So the other time where we see hormone changes and seborrheic dermatitis is going to be in adolescence during puberty as well as in later on in life. So with seborrheic dermatitis, what we're focusing on is the pilosebaceous unit, and that is the hair follicle and the sebaceous gland. So I have a picture here that I've painted. Right here is the hair follicle as well as the sebaceous gland, and here's kind of an a zoomed in version of it. And so with seborrheic dermatitis, what you're seeing is an increase in the sebum production by the hair follicle, and that's causing this buildup of sebum right next to the hair follicle. And that does a couple of things. One, the Malassezia species, which is a type of fungus, can feed off of those lipids that are in the sebum production. And then the immune system has an abnormal response to that, and that contributes to bu the buildup of these plaques and scales and flakes and everything. And so what we know is that this increased sebaceous gland activity can be triggered by androgenic hormones. So androgenic hormones can play a part here and in this increased sebaceous gland activity and be part of the etiology of seborrheic dermatitis. Now in men, with high levels of testosterone, we see more cases of seborrheic dermatitis. Overall, seborrheic dermatitis is more common in men than women, about two to one. And so I think that's something that's really interesting. And so part of it could be due because of the androgenic hormone of, tes of testosterone causing an increase in that sebum production. Similar to the fact we see androgens having on acne with increasing the sebum production, that's kind of what we're seeing here with seborrheic dermatitis. And what's happening is wherever there, for that person, wherever there's like a link in the homeostatic chain, whatever the weak part, that is going to be where the body's going to respond and have these different symptoms. So I think there's still a lot that we really don't know and understand completely about how the body works on that physiological level and biochemical level. It's interesting to see that how some people could have a hormone imbalance and that could manifest in acne or that can manifest in seborrheic dermatitis or can in women it can it can manifest in PCOS, diabetes. There's a lot we don't know about why some people get it and some people don't. But I think also we have to also look kind of at the bigger picture of okay yeah you may have some sort of hormone imbalance or hormone change 
but what is causing that hormone imbalance? And so for, for me, it really goes back to the foundations of health and it really goes back to your diet. What are you eating? Because the foods you eat are going to impact your hormones and then also your stress. And so if you, how well or how poorly you're managing your stress, that's also going to have effect on your hormones, obviously your cholesterol and your skin health. So you might have a hormone imbalance, but the, what's the cause of that hormone imbalance that then is causing some symptoms of seborrheic dermatitis? And so we have to always go back to the foods you're eating and stress. And there's actually not really a lot of up-to-date research on how hormones impact seborrheic dermatitis, but I think it's really interesting when we see when we are getting these occurrences of seborrheic dermatitis. And so obviously they're occurring in infants, but there's a lot of hormone changes going on with the mother and if the, if the mother's breastfeeding her infant. And then we kind of get a break during your childhood. And then when individuals go into puberty, that's when we start to can see a resurgence of seborrheic dermatitis. Some people can get it then. And so you're having more hormonal changes. And then kind of later in life in like your 40s as well. Of course, you can see it other times. It's just something that's really interesting that we see some of these hormone changes happening in the body. If your hormones aren't balanced, this is going to have a lot of different effects. And so for some people, it could result in seborrheic dermatitis. Other people, it's going to result in other symptoms. That could be something to keep in mind if you are having recurrent seborrheic dermatitis or if it's really resistant to healing, then maybe taking a deeper look at your hormones and maybe that could be the triggering factor here. And also, if you haven't seen my other videos on seborrheic dermatitis, you can check both of those out here. All right, that's gonna be it for this video. Just a quick note on how hormones could be impacting your seborrheic dermatitis. But of course, we always need to focus on the foods that you're eating and your stress. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, then go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe for more.